Hello and welcome to Jesus for Asia Now. I'm Natalie Wood and my husband John is here with me today. Hello, love. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm really excited about this because this is a continuation mm. of the story of the church yeah. that is sponsoring Bible workers in India. Right. Yeah, that's really cool how they got together and decided as a board that they wanted to sponsor 10 Bible workers in India. Right. And so it's the story of how a church in Tennessee can make an impact on the other side of the planet. Yep. <laughs> this church decided to do mm -hmm. this at a time when they were going to be building a new church facility. Yeah, they were meeting in a tent. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we remember that well. <laughs> yeah, we were there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because this is our home church. Yes. Yes. So the church facility that was going to be built was not cheap. No. And so it was like a financial, big financial hurdle coming up. Mm -hmm. And yet the church board voted to sponsor Bible workers in India. Yeah. Ten of them. Yes. So that they could be helping on the other side of the world during this time. So yeah. it's just an interesting, neat relationship and how the church made that choice, even at a time when they knew financial challenge was coming Yeah, and they went by faith yeah. and uh, started sponsoring. So in the last show, we kind of left it off as they decided to do this. We got to see some of the results, but what happened to the church? Did they, were they able to build a new facility? Did they go bankrupt? Uh, did God bless? How did that work? And that's what we're, that's what we're going to be finding out this show. Right. But before we get to that part of the story, uh -huh. let's meet some more of the Bible workers they're sponsoring. Okay. My mother passed away when I was doing sixth grade. It was my father who took care of me and my three sisters. We were very strong Hindus. I used to worship idols. I did not know about Jesus. I even I used to go to Parani temple, which is a famous Hindu temple. I used to go on pilgrimage, walking from my house to Parani. I used to lead a group and that was the time my father met with an accident and he passed away. I was completely broken. My father was friendly with a pastor. His name is Meshach. And uh, he used to come to our house, not very often, but sometimes. And after my father's death, he started teaching me about Jesus Christ because I was in a big depression. This pastor Mesha took me to the nearby Seventh-day Adventist church. The pastor who was there uh, took care of me. And uh, particularly in that church, I like uh, so much is that uh, every Sabbath after the lunch, they would go for outreach, meeting people and praying for them. They would go to new villages. And uh, they even encouraged me, you also come join. But by that time I was not baptized. But we used to go, I used to join with them. And uh, the first time when they asked me to pray, I was hesitating because I have never ever prayed before. But the same night when I went to home, I knelt and I prayed to the Lord, Lord, please teach me how to pray. That was how I was slowly learning each and everything. And then the next week when we went for our outreach, they asked me to pray and I started praying. I really liked the church so much. And in the year 2015, October 24, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I took baptism in the same church. There was one old man in my church called Nayana Desigan. He used to take me to wherever he goes for visiting to do God's work. Many places he has taken me and he also takes me to funerals. He taught me how to do these things and he taught me uh, so many truths from the Bible. During that time, the church was so supportive and I told that old man, I don't have anyone. And during that time, there was a transfer for the pastor, Pastor Saurya, he came as a pastor here and he introduced me to my wife who was then working in the school as a teacher. They are also looking for a nice man, godly man and that family is a godly family. So they were talking about it. It took nearly six months of time. And then finally, 2017, he married Sister Joy. I 
I think it's neat because the pastor was there mm. when he was in sorrow over his father's passing yeah. and could share with him. Yeah. And the church just brought him in and, you know, drew him in yeah. into helping with outreach. And he was converted, you know, like, as a result of the, the church just working and helping him. And Yeah, and that he liked doing the outreach yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. I think that's a really good example yeah. to involve new believers with outreach, to sh give them a chance to share what they're learning. Right. Yeah. That, and it was also neat how he would say, Lord, teach me mm. how to pray and different mm. things. The Lord was teaching him everything. Yeah. Um, that's so really that's, beautiful. Sometimes our testimonies are just like we live them. So it's, it's not, we don't say them mm. out loud. And so other people don't necessarily know what our testimony is. Mm. And sometimes it's very simple, you yeah. know. Uh -huh. But other times it's major. I mean, he came out of Hinduism. He was walking back and forth to Balani, that temple, yeah. worshiping the idols there. We and did a show on Balani. Yeah, we did a show in Balani back in 2004. Yeah. It's a major temple city. Yes. <laughs> so we have another video. Mm -hmm. So let's watch that one next. Okay. I was introduced to this Kumar, who is a Hindu priest. He was the in charge for the whole temple. And when they went to his house, he invited few of the neighborhood people also for prayer. But there were people who started questioning, you being a Hindu priest, how can you have prayer in your house? How can you entertain other religion? and that too a Christian religion. It is not good. But I was surprised to see this man. He said, it is my business. You don't mind my business. You mind your own business. When he started listening to the message from the Bible, God really touched his heart. The Hindu priest asked us, can you please pray for my brother? I tried everything what I can, but nothing is being answered. He was really mentally disturbed and he was possessed by devil. And that time, this uh, gopi was admitted in a rehabilitation center so that he can recover from these mental issues. But he was getting worse. And uh, I, when I went to visit him in the hospital, he had so many uh, threads tied on his uh, fist and uh, on his hips and even on his neck and he's having this lemon in his pocket and uh, some ashes and other things in his pocket. And when we went and told Gopi to pray, read Bible, he said, no, I don't want to do it. I won't pray, I won't read Bible. And you just leave me alone. As we were talking to him in the hospital, the next patient, she said, can you please pray for my son who's very sick? And we went and prayed for him. When we came back, this gopi started asking us, I had a lemon in my pocket and that is missing now. You are the one who took it and all the other things which I had in my pocket, you took it. You give it to me right now. I know you took it, but we didn't take it. And then even though he didn't like to, us to pray for him, but we prayed for him and we left a Bible with his mother and came from that hospital that day. And uh, after two weeks, he was discharged from the hospital and his mother called us. She said, uh, we have brought Gopi home. He is with us now. Can you please come to my home and have a fasting and prayer, for, especially for my son? So we organized a prayer and we went. We went to his house for prayer and also a few church members joined us. When we went, we gave the Bible and asked this Gopi to read Psalms 23 but he never read and the pastor understood that all the ropes and all those uh, things which he was having on his fist and his hip and uh, in his neck pastor said we need to cut them then only he will be completely delivered from the evil possession so she brought the scissors and they cut everything and uh, after that uh, gopi was able to read the bible and pray with them that day the following week, Gopi's mother decided to take baptism. 
she and her younger son but gopi refused to do that so we started singing song we started praising god so that the devil will leave him alone but still gopi was refusing then the pastor saw there was one rope on his fist which was still there so pastor said we need to cut that that satan need to flee from him so when they brought the scissors and they when they cut and threw the uh, thread from his hand he was touched by the holy spirit then gopi said yes i will take baptism he came inside the tank and he was baptized that day he accepted jesus christ he was completely cured from the devil possession and he could not even complete his 10th grade but after he accepted jesus christ god helped him to do his studies well he passed his board exams and now right now he is studying in a college in the it field when gopi was baptized pastor gave him a new name he was called daniel now sister joy requests that you would please pray for this daniel so that he will be a true daniel like the daniel in the bible that seems to be a theme in these videos where people get delivered and they end up with a smile on their face yep <laughs> and it's beautiful <laughs> yes it is that's what jesus does right yeah right that's an amazing story i know all the things that that poor young man had to go through mhm mm and you know that's a specialty uh that satan has in blinding the eyes of those that he likes to control mm -hmm. we have a story of a man that was wanted to become a christian and he got a bible from a christian but there were no words on the pages they were all blank mm -hmm. and so he went back to the christian says this bible's broken there's no words on the page and the christian says oh he, satan's blinding your eyes pray this prayer so he went home and he prayed that prayer and then he could see all the words on the page yeah this is what satan can do right yeah right powerful but god is stronger he is stronger and he specializes in delivering captives yes right well we've got another video okay I'm taking care of two churches and we don't have churches there but these are the new areas we have entered into and by the grace of God now we have a small gathering there right now As we were praying door to door the people nearby they told us there is one more family here a Christian family you please go pray for them they need prayer that is how i was led to this house she told me my sister's son three times he met with accident but somehow two times he is saved but this time again he met with an accident and he got a hit on his head and his head is injured now he is not able to move he is in coma stage would you please go pray for him and then we went we met this raja and we started praying for him and the murisuri sister told me so this raja <clears throat> when i went and when i saw since he had this major accident and his skull was majorly injured he lost his memory and he could not even stand for a while or sit for a while and when he asked him can i pray for you he said yes you can pray for me so he and his wife started regularly going and praying for them when they are not going they would call them over the phone and pray with them every day and their main uh, aim was to make this man a living witness among his uh, relatives so they were praying very earnestly to the lord and what happened one day when they went to pray for him he was very sick and he told his wife that you should get a uh, oil and keep it it is not the oil which is going to cure him but it is jesus christ you should have faith on jesus christ so that lady helped her husband in applying the oil from head to toe when they started doing this anointing prayer they could see that improvement in his health he was getting better and also god blessed him in such a way that when we went to his house 
he himself would stand up and he would welcome them yes please come inside after rajab started walking doing things on his own when we go for prayer he used to bring all the neighborhood people to come and sit mostly his wife his father and all his relatives it's a small house but he used to gather them all and he and his wife used to teach them about bible and pray with them my only aim is that that village where raja is now we pray that the whole village will be saved the whole village will know jesus christ and now god is opening doors there through this person called raja and we are praying that god will heal him completely please pray for that village and for raja's family so that they will accept jesus christ and take baptism very soon thank you thank you bye and that beautiful yeah <laughs> how god can change even the worst outlook yes you know he was in a coma major skull damage there yeah i mean and he was in a coma and everything and uh-huh. god has shown him himself yeah and now he's bringing others yeah that's awesome and the circle keeps widening yes so a church sponsors a bible worker he goes to a village starts to grow another person accepts jesus they become kind of like doing the work of a bible worker yeah a missionary and it keeps growing and keeps widening and keeps widening yep uh i think we need thousands more bible workers yes we do <laughs> <laughs> yes we do well we have one more testimony video from that area okay herself and her husband they had a wonderful uh, job and they were planning to develop their business so they bought a truck they started building the house but the house was incomplete and all of a sudden they lost everything the job went down and they were running really stopped completely the house which they started constructing they could not complete the construction it stopped altogether and that was the time i was really worried and uh, i started going to all the temples because i am a hindu and my whole family is a hindu believer we went to many temples but none of the idols answered our prayers and uh, that was the time sister joy and pastor uh, zakaria came and met me i was in a very big problem that time mentally physically and spiritually it was so painful because i didn't have money i couldn't build my house there were so many debts my husband borrowed a lot of money from others and everyone was just pressurizing me that was the time i decided that i should die kill myself we wanted to die together because we could not bear this pain and finally one day sister joy called her and asked her how are you it has been quite a long time how was your health then immediately sister joy and brother zakaria they both took the bike and came here and met them and they started praying with them and then she told them you please you need to pray for me i'm going to commit a sin i'm going to kill myself and my wife's life they both went and bought the poison from the shop and they kept it ready any time if there is a gap they wanted to eat and drink and kill themselves then when they shared with the bible workers Uh, they they told them you please bring it you should not have it with you how did you take this decision you have a jesus who is alive how did you take this decision give it to us we are not we are not going to leave it leave you like this then she she told them if you take this we will buy it again they said no please don't do that night till 8 o'clock in the night they all together four of them knelt down and they started praying tearfully they pray that god will take that uh, thing out from their mind to kill themselves and they took the poison and they went after going home they called up them over the phone and they started praying over the phone encouraging them and telling them not to commit this kind of a thing 
Now God has given them the peace. Their house where they are staying is a mud house. They don't have even floor. It's a very small tiny house with mud. This new house is given by their father-in-law. This was donated for him and he has donated this house now. As they are praying, as they are coming close to God, God is one after the other answering their prayers. And uh, regarding their house, the man who gave loan, he filed a case on them and uh, their own advocate said, you have signed in all the papers, if you don't pay the loan, your house is going to be an auction. And they came and stick the auction, the warning paper on our house. And we, we didn't know what to do. We called Sister Joy, the JFA worker, and we told her the problem. Again, we knelt and we prayed to God. And God answered the prayer. When we went to the court, even our own advocate, he said, we cannot win the case. But when they went to the uh, court, the judge there, he gave, gave a verdict which was surprise, which was an answer for our prayers. The judge said, no, you cannot take their land. You cannot put the land for auction. Where will they go live? They have children, they have a family. And the judge said, we will give five uh, months time to pay the loan. And the judge said, you cannot put the house on auction. So now God even saved their land from being put in auction and we thank the Lord for that. Isn't that beautiful how God works? Yes. You know, it's His kindness that leads to repentance. Right. So God is kind to these people. They recognize it and they follow Him. Right. And they come to Him with all of their problems. Yes. You know, financial problems, family problems, right. health problems. We haven't finished with the story of the church. What happened to the church in Tennessee? Right. Yeah. They you were want gonna... to share that? Sure. So they were in a tent and they were getting ready to build. It was going to be an expensive project. Mm -hmm. But um, in spite of the fact that they were spending money on the overseas foreign missions, they had pledges and donations for the full amount of the building before they started to build. Yes. So God really blessed. That is a miracle. It was very fast, too. For that large of a project, it was very quick yes. that all the donations and pledges came. Yeah. And so now the church is standing and it's full. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more people coming, new people visiting every Sabbath, and it's just a beautiful thing to yeah. see. And they're using it for health ministry yes. and other types of ministry. A lot of community outreach. and yep. It's just a beautiful thing. And it's a visual picture of how when you put God's kingdom first, He takes care of you. Right. Many times mm. we think it's a competition between the local church budget and the foreign mission field. Right. But it's not intended to be that way. God doesn't intend it to be that way. In fact, and just the opposite. Right. <laughs> and there's a quote from Mrs. White that we'd like to share at this time. Okay. The home missionary work will be farther advanced in every way when a more liberal, self-denying, self-sacrificing spirit is manifested for the prosperity of foreign missions. For the prosperity of the home work depends largely under God upon the reflex influence of the evangelical work done in countries afar off. It is in working actively to supply the necessities of the cause of God that we bring our souls in touch with the source of all power. Wow. So foreign missions and local church budget are not in competition. No, it's a cooperative combined effort. That's that right. That pushes the gospel forward in both areas. Right. Exactly. Well, it's been our privilege to share these stories in writing with the church that's sponsoring them. Yeah. But now we have video, so yeah. we can share. I'm looking forward to sharing the videos with the church. Yeah, and I think they're going to be really pleased because, you know, they've been putting the money in by faith um, that the Lord would use that. And now they can start to see the fruit. Right. Because sometimes, you know, when we give to foreign missions, this is one of the hardest things. Mm -hmm. We give it. And we don't personally see the results many mm -hmm. times. Right. And so it's like we're just casting our bread upon the waters, so to right. speak, as the Bible puts it. Right. And sometimes we get to find out what happens with it, and sometimes we don't. Right. It's all by faith. Right. Now, this is a new area that 
that they sent these Bible workers into. So there right. was no work started there. So that's, that takes the extra time that, you know, to find the inroads, to find the open doors. Right. And so it takes more time to get that going. But it, you know, after, after a few years, you can see, wow, this was really worth it. Right. <laughs> right. And it's so neat, the influence of the two of the two together, the husband and wife, mm -hmm. you know, when, when he first came into the church, he was a single man mm -hmm. and he was like, I'm all alone. Yeah. And then they found each other yeah. and the Lord is using them together mm -hmm. so powerfully. It's yes. just so neat. There's still so many towns and villages in, in India that have no, have never heard the gospel from any denomination. Right. They say 400, over 400,000 towns and villages still have not heard the gospel. Yeah. Um, and so there's still opportunities for this generation, for us to really get involved, to really make a difference. And I think other churches could do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's not that hard. No. And it's really not that expensive. No. $100 a month will supply the basic necessities for a Bible worker. Right. Full-time Bible worker. Right. And so a church can say, oh, we'd like to sponsor five, or we'd like to sponsor 10, or we'd like to sponsor 20. And we can find a special area in India that we can say, okay, this is your church's area. Right. And send them out, send the Bible workers out into that area and keep watering those seeds and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's especially neat because the local church is praying also for yes. those workers yes. and for the people they're reaching out to. Yes. So that extends the reach and the ministry of those Bible workers even farther That's right. because God's holy angels go with them then. That's right. As a result of all the prayers. And the prayers go the other way too. Yes. Because the Bible they pray workers. <laughs> for the church. Too. For the church, yes. And yeah. uh, so it's a reciprocal. And the end result is more, uh, more souls won for Christ. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. <laughs> Both sides of the planet. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I would like to invite you to pray for these people and consider whether your church would like to sponsor Bible workers in India or other countries in Asia or whether you'd like to personally sponsor some. If you would like more information, you can contact us at Jesus for Asia, P.O. Box 1221, College Dale, Tennessee, 37315. Call us at 423 413-7321 or visit our website at jesusforasia.org. May God richly bless you until we see you next time on Jesus for Asia Now.